At this point, we've learned about quite a number of transformations. So what happens when a relation we're looking at has some combination of these transformations? For example, graph y equals 2x squared plus 1. In this relation, we can see that we have a combination of transformations. We have a vertical expansion by 2 here, and we also have a vertical translation up by 1 here. So which do we do first? Or does it even matter? Well, let's give it a try. We'll try both ways and see what comes of it. In our first attempt here, we'll start by doing the vertical expansion first, and then we'll do the vertical translation. So let's start with our base quadratic. And the vertical expansion is by a factor of 2. Thus, each of the y values will be multiplied by 2. So let's establish some points to sort this out. And here are three points. Looking at this one first, negative 1, 1. And we multiply the y value by 2. The x value stays the same. And we get negative 1, 2. For this point, 1, 1. Again, multiply the y value by 2. And we get 1, 2. And finally, we'll deal with a vertex here at 0, 0. And of course, 0 times 2 gives us 0. So it's the same point. And we'll draw our new version of this relation, y equals 2x squared. We're done with the expansion. So next, let's move on to our vertical translation. And we simply shift everything up by 1. And we're done with this graph. On to our second attempt but in a different order. This time, we'll do the vertical translation first, and then the vertical expansion. Again, we'll start with our base quadratic. The vertical translation moves the entire graph up by 1 to here. So we're done with the vertical translation, and our graph now shows y equals x squared plus 1. So next, our vertical expansion by 2. And that, again, involves multiplying the y values by 2. So here are our points. And we look at this one, negative 1, 2. And multiplying the y value by 2, leaving the x value alone, and we get negative 1, 4. And for this point here, we multiply the y value by 2 and 1, 4. And we look back at our previous attempt, and we can see that things are already looking different. These points are at 3, and these points are at y equals 4. Hmm, something's different here. We'll look at our last point. The vertex is now at 0, 1, and 1 times 2, and we end up with 0, 2. Again, it's shifted up more than our last attempt. We think about this. And we recognize that adding first meant that we had a greater number to multiply by. So really, the addition or translation up got mixed in with the expansion. Well, the bottom line is that we see that order does matter. This first attempt is the accurate one. So let's establish an order here. Now that we know that order does matter, Let's establish an order that allows us to be consistently correct. So for multiple transformations, all combined in a relation, here's an order that will allow us to be always correct. We first do reflections, then the expansions and compressions, and then the translations. Now the reflections and expansions and compressions, they can be interchanged technically, but most people find reflections easier to be done first. But the main thing is that the translations are done last. It's much like bedmas. We know that to get it correct, we do our multiplying and dividing before our addition and subtraction. That is, we need to do our reflections, expansions, and compressions before we do our translations. And this is the default order for are combined transformation problems. Now, some people remember it easiest 
by writing their standard transformation equation like this. And then they just work from left to right or alphabetically as A, the vertical reflection, and then expansion or compression, B, the horizontal reflection, then expansion or compression, C, the horizontal translation, and finally, D, for the vertical translation. Whatever helps you remember it.